it's not that I disagree with everything you say. It's I think a lot of what you say, I honestly, Pearl, I'm I'm doing my best to look in you, you, you in the eye virtually. I don't know how much of this you really believe and how much you're provoking. And there's nothing I started my career as a provocateur, mm-hmm. as someone who provoked people to build a following. Mm-hmm. It wasn't on social media. It was through TV shows, chat shows, as you would say, in Britain. So I know a provocateur when I see one, <laughs> and I'm looking at one. <laughs> I get this a lot. I know people always say that to me, that they don't think I believe the things I say. I do really, I, No, I really do. I don't know why people always say that. I do change my opinions at times. So, you know, I, I'm kind what of a... What tell I'm, you? What? If you change your radically, it's not like you change your opinion. Like I like polka dots. I don't like polka dots. If you're changing fundamental opinions, Mm -hmm. like divorce, divorce should be banned, things like that. And uh, the idea about purity and et cetera, et cetera. If you're changing fundamental views, what are you going to do? Do you, as a huge voice, someone has a huge following have a responsibility to go back to all those people Mm -hmm. who have been convinced to hold those views by you and now go back and somehow communicate to all of them and say, you know what? I misled you unintentionally. Mm -hmm. It wasn't intentional, but I misled you. I led you to a view that is not the most healthy one. Mm -hmm. Will you take responsibility for that as someone who has a giant voice? Can you take responsibility for that? Mm -hmm. What do you mean by responsibility? You want me to go say can sorry? You somehow, like, do you want me to say sorry? Can you somehow, <laughs> for, can you somehow, yeah. mm-hmm. can you somehow put out a significant number of videos where you mm-hmm. say, you know what, guys, I changed my mind. Don't follow my previous advice. Is there a way for you to do it? Yeah, but I guess, I guess I wouldn't look at it as advice before. Like, I, I wouldn't say if I think divorce should be banned, that's like telling you how to live. You know, I Isn't mean, that's it? just it's worse than that. No, but it's, that's just a policy government. That, but that's just a it's policy government. That, I, that I used to think. But it's not well, like any policies changed because I said that, you know. Yeah. But when you advocate for it, when you used to advocate it up yeah. until God knows how when, yeah. that's a government policy. Yeah. That well, would have to be enforced. Yeah, I get, that sorry, that grows government. Mm-hmm. That grows government. Mm-hmm. And to that extent, you're the very opposite of the conservative you claim to be. Conservatives don't want to grow big government. The more that yeah. you take the government and you make a law that affects individual people, mm-hmm. the more you're growing government power. As a libertarian and a true conservative, I find that repellent. Yeah. And this is where I think you you honestly don't see how some of the things you advocate for would lead to bigger government. Yeah. No, I understand the marriage well. And I really, I really changed my mind on the divorce thing. I just, I've seen too much, I guess. Um, but I, I guess I wouldn't really look at it as advice. It was just kind of my thoughts at the time, you know. You're, you're underestimating your power. You have, you're underestimating, this is both a compliment, I don't know if it's a criticism. You're mm-hmm. underestimating your power as someone who's an incredible influencer Mm-hmm. who people take your word as being not just your opinion, but as being true with a capital T. Mm-hmm. I know these dangers because my students look up to me as a guru. I've been called the sex messiah of the nerds. Right. My, my students, if you ever can't, I don't do seminars anymore. I do the AI thing. And if you want to pay me 50 grand mm-hmm. to come for a weekend, I'll think about it. But the thing is, is I had to learn that my students wanted someone to obey. I surrounded myself with people. This is true. Mm -hmm. I knew that that was a danger. I knew that my own little bit of narcissistic tendencies, that would turn into a poison for me. Mm -hmm. So I surrounded myself with people who would say, hey, Ross, you're full of shit. You're way out of bounds. Mm -hmm. These people are looking up to you. As their guru, you better let them know that this is just your opinion. Mm-hmm. So what I'm trying to say to you is I think you're underestimating the power of your voice. Mm-hmm. You, they may, you may indeed just be giving your opinions, mm-hmm. but the incels, and I think a lot of your audience, I can't prove it, are incels, okay. who listen to you, 
are taking it as the gospel, are taking it mm -hmm. as the truth. Mm -hmm. And I think to that extent, you're underestimating your power. And as my favorite philosopher, Spider-Man said, with great power comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm. So if you had that power and it influenced people to take it as the truth, mm -hmm. I think on some way, and I don't know how you do it, you have the responsibility to make it very, very clear mm -hmm. that your opinions have changed. Uh, not just say it once or twice in a short, mm -hmm. but make it very clear to those people that they're now off base because of what you said prior, mm -hmm. that they took to be true. I know, I believe you. I can read body language. I can read facial expressions. When you say that you view it just as your opinions, mm -hmm. I get it. But the majority of the people watching you mm -hmm. don't. They view it as true. But why would they Why would they view it? It's not like you're God. I mean, you give your opinions, I give my opinions. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's but, like every every person gives their opinions based on, you know. That's their, a function. Their, yeah. That's a function of the psychology of your audience. I'm yeah. willing to bet. And again, this isn't science. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This is my intuitive read. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. My guess is a huge portion of your audience are men who are pissed off at women mm -hmm. because they're not getting any. They're incels and they they are going to, they're far more likely to take your opinions as true with a capital T because they're very emotionally charged in the way they look at you. Mm -hmm. That's just my that's just my take. I am actually saying to you mm -hmm. that you have more, your voice has more power than you think. It's not just giving you, and as you grow more famous mm -hmm. and good on you, that you are growing more famous because mm -hmm. that's your hard work. I don't agree with a lot of your opinions. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with your thinking, which is often unnuanced, mm -hmm. but good on you because you're doing it through a hell of a lot of hard work. And through continuing to grow your skills as a provocateur, good on you. Mm -hmm. But the bigger your audience grows and the more persuasive you become, mm -hmm. the more people are going to take it as less being only your opinion. They're going to take it as being true. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs>